tell you a story. At the height of the Roman Empire, 2,000 years ago, Emperor Tiberius welcomed an unusual guest. This guest, a goldsmith, brought a lustrous, light, silver-colored medal, unlike anything the world had seen before. It was a product the goldsmith claimed he had formed out of clay, a metal found to be even more precious than gold or silver. But what this mysterious metal posed to Emperor Tiberius was not opportunity, but threat, and thus the goldsmith was executed. The world would wait almost 2,000 years before discovering aluminium again. For the longest time, aluminium was more precious than gold or platinum. Not because it was rare, because aluminium is in fact the third most common element in the Earth's crust. It was rare because we didn't know how to extract it from its ore. That is, until we discovered the process of electrolysis. And today, aluminium is so abundant that we literally throw it away. Peter Diamandis narrates this story in his exhilarating book, Abundance. The future is better than you think. The point Diamandis makes with this example is that, is, is that scarcity is often contextual and that technology is a resource-liberating mechanism. Diamandis points out that 70% of our Earth is covered in water. 97.5% is salt water, 2% is ice, and the remaining 0.5% suitable for drinking, we fight over. Now, imagine if we discovered the technology to desalinate water just as easily as we use electrolysis to extract aluminium from its ore. What impact would this have on the human condition? The solution to scarcity is not to cut the pie thinner, but to make more pies. Conservation and recycling are short-term solutions. The long-term solution is to invent our way out of problems. Now, let's get one thing straight. Abundance isn't the same thing as wealth. It's not providing every human being on this planet with the same wealth and the same luxuries. Rather, it's this concept, this mindset, of providing opportunity to every single person. So who will help us usher in this new era, era of abundance? Diamandis identifies four sources. Techno-philanthropy, maverick innovators, technology, and what he calls the rising billion, the poorest of the poor who are coming online, joining global discourse, and transforming themselves into an emerging market force. Diamandis points out that the poor today in the United States have access to luxuries such as running water, flushing toilets, mobile phones, things that a hundred years ago, the billionaires of the day, Ford, Vanderbilt, could never have even dreamed of. Now imagine a giant orange tree packed with fruit. Once I take all the oranges from the lower branches, I'm effectively out of accessible fruit. From my limited perspective, oranges are now scarce, right? But once someone invents a piece of technology called a ladder, I suddenly got new reach. Problem solved. Technology is a resource liberating mechanism. It can make the one scarce now abundant. So, from the beginning of time until 2003, we invented, we created five exabytes of digital information. And to put this into perspective, one exabyte is the equivalent to one billion gigabytes. By 2010, we were generating this information every two days. By the end of this year, we'll be generating this information every 10 minutes. In such a scenario, people will find it difficult to grasp this concept of abundance. Our brains develop in a local, linear environment, but we're now living in a global, exponential world. Exponential growth in technologies will have tremendous implications on the betterment of the human condition. 3D printing, supercomputing, 
nanobot speech recognition will all radically change our world. The future will begin to see an abundance of not only information, but of food, water, energy, electricity. These are all things that are scarce today, but will become commonplace in the future. We have been incredibly focused on the problems, and too often we forget the tremendous accomplishments that have taken place in the past 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 years. Mankind is capable of great things, and the future of abundance is just the beginning. Yes, there will be the pessimists who whine about the dark side of technology. There will be the detractors who try and take away from the scale of our problems, and the cynics who carp about the corruption in our world. But Diamandis points out that in order to change the world, one must have passion and conviction in order to convince the world of anything, which is, of course, the first hit.